Hey, you, I need you to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. Right? So I'm gonna deal with you, sis, because you understand that you are an Israelite. There's something that we must do as Israelites. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So these people are required by God to do something. We require to live a certain way because we are the ones that are the princes and princesses of God. One of those things you're doing already is when the Bible's coming out, a princess has her hair cut. That's a beautiful right. thing according to God. Right? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Right, so what's required of the Israelite man, woman, and child is to keep the commandments of God for our good. Because when we look at our communities, our communities are in shambles. And it's because we break laws. We steal when the Bible says thou shalt not steal. We kill when the Bible says thou shalt not kill. We commit adultery and fornication when the Bible says not to commit adultery. We break laws, not religion. We got plenty of religion. Our people, everything from Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, uh, what are we in religion? Jehovah's Witness, Seventh day Adventists, Baptists. We everything except keeping the commandments of God. So, what are some commandments that our people are required to do as Israelites that will please God? We're going to get some real quick. Give me a friend just for that, That's true. That's true. And you know what? We get that real quick. Leviticus 19 and 17. Right? I'm going to get that. I love that you have some understanding. You are a lot easier to deal with. Most of the time, our people come up and they buck up against us. They're rebellious. They, don't, they hate this thing. Because this. You know what Jesus said about that? But you're right. You know what Jesus said about that? But you know why people hate this so much? Because it forces you to change. It forces discipline. Okay, thank you. And our people hate this. Sorry. We hate that thing, right? But What's this? Else too. Read. Right, exactly. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So the Bible says that we should not hate our brother in our heart. Now it's going to specify who your brother is. Because we're told that everybody is our brother. But do everybody treat us like brothers and sisters? No, they don't. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Right, you should rebuke your neighbor. Meaning, let's say my brother is out here right now shooting shooting a shot at a young lady. And I know he has no intentions on marrying that sister or taking care of children if she has his children. He just sees her as a sex object. My job is to check him. Yeah. Hey, bro, get, look, marry that sister or don't deal with her at all. Because you, you treating this sister like, you treating her less than a hoe than a prostitute. Because prostitutes get paid. This sister going to get a baby put in there and she ain't going to get nothing. She's going to have to go and get on welfare or something to get taken care of because a nigga doesn't want to take care of her. That's what we do. We, tell, we used to be accountable of our communities. We're not that no more. That's why drugs and things pump through our community and we say nothing. We're scared of that thing because we, we feel like these kids going to kill us. Shotgun with it. Right, shotgun, right, we used to have shotgun with us. Oh, you slept with my daughter? All right, cool. Stand right there. I'm going to come back with your shotgun and you will marry my daughter. Or I will put you in the dirt today. We had honor then. We don't got honor today. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. Sin. Sleeping with a woman and not marrying her is fornication. That's adultery. Selling drugs is uh, not only idolatry, but it's witchcraft. That's that's murder. That's that's sin. So if we love our neighbor as ourselves, we don't suffer them to commit these sins in our neighborhood. Read. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Against who? The children of thy people. That's your brother, that's your neighbor. The children of your people. The people that are your same race. So when the Bible says this, read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It's talking about the children of your people, your race. Our people have been taught to love every other race on the planet, but we hate our own race. But the Bible says, love 
your race right. as yourself. Because other races love their race. You go to Chinatown, do they struggle to get along? They struggle building business with each other? Matter of fact, one, uh, something happened to some Chinese people. They came out and drove to support theirs and asked us to help them. The same people that whoop out sister's tail in, in their hair stores. Now we gotta help them fight oppression. Y'all ain't really getting oppressed. I'm not saying that that wasn't wrong. But y'all don't know what oppression is. We know what oppression is. Right. And still know what oppression is. So why, why we gotta come to y'all aid when we still fighting for what y'all got? And then some. Right? Read it again. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. Because if you love your neighbor as yourself, sis, you rebuke your neighbor. You tell them where they're in error so that they can fix it. Deuteronomy 22 and... Uh, my fact, give me friends real quick. Well, I have a question. What's up, sis? Does neighbor only <coughs> your own people? Read it again. Go back. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Against the children of your race. Read. But thou shalt love thy my neighbor. So who's the neighbor is talking about? Your people. The children of your people. Read. As thyself, I am the Lord. Right. It was the continued thought. So yes, sis, your neighbor is your own people. That's your people. Because the Bible is only about one people. Right. The Bible calls those other people enemies. You know why it calls those people enemies? Zechariah 11 and 5. I'm going to show you why the Bible calls the other races enemies. Because the other races do things like this. And this is prevalent today. You know, what we've been watching all week, what trial we've been watching? George Floyd, right? Why have we been watching that thing so closely, sis? Because he was killed publicly. He was killed publicly. In front of everybody. On a purpose. A man on purpose. Right, so we know he killed this man on purpose, right? And why was it so important for us to watch it? What did we think was going to happen, potentially? He was going to get off. We thought he was going to get off. You see how simple that was to say that? Because that's, that's normal for us now. That's commonplace for us to see our people get murdered in cold blood and the person that did it get away with it. Right. Now I'm going to show you that in the Bible. So let's read. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 5. Whose possessors slay them. So when we came over to this, this country, were we a possession or were we equal partners? We were a possession. Who possessed us? The white man. Same when they put his knee on George Floyd's neck, right? He was the possessor. George Floyd was the possession. You follow me? Read it again. Whose possessors slay them? Whose possessors? The white man's the possessor. Slays the possession. Read before that? Yeah, read it. Read what's before that. Read verse uh, 4. Read. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 4. Thus saith the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter. Feed the flock. The flock of the slaughter is the Israelites because they are led like sheep to the slaughter. We follow everything. We celebrate Christmas and we die because that's idolatry. Because Christmas is in the Bible it says don't do that. Right. Our people follow everything under the sun. Feed the, to the slaughter. Feed the flock of the slaughter which are the Israelites. Read. Whose possessors? Whose possessors? The flock of the slaughter is the Israelites and their possessors, their slave masters, so we can make it plain, do what? Slay them, kill them, and hold themselves not guilty. Mm. You hear that, sis? Read that slow for my sister real quick. This is why we've been sitting in front of the TV, hoping to God this white man goes to prison. Because this is our reality, sis. Read it from the top again, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord my God, uh -huh. feed the flock of the slaughter. You know what it means when it says feed the flock of my slaughter? Teach them this Bible. Feed them with my words. Teach them, because they don't know that this is in the Bible. Read. Whose possessors slay them. Because their slave masters kill them. And hold themselves not guilty. And they get off. They get away with it, sis. Do you know that was in the Bible? That's heavy, ain't it, sis? That thing made you cry. And I'm glad, sis. You know, give me a, a contrite spirit. Give me, you know what that Psalms says? Psalms Psalms what? What's a contrite heart? A, a contrite heart. Yeah, give me that. Give me that in the Psalms. I love that, sis. Now, um, don't cry but so much, sis, and I'm going to tell you why. Because God loves that thing, sis. 
That thing powerful. We don't know that's in the Bible because Christian church teaches this, but they don't teach us that the Bible condemns this man for what he does to us. The Bible condemns him. That's why this thing ain't about all people. Because what people on the planet getting slaughtered and the people getting away with it. In the Bible. Watch this, sis. Read. Psalms chapter 51, verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. The Bible says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. The fact that we read in the Bible that the Israelites, that your people are killed and the people get away with them broke you to tears, sis. That thing broke you to tears. You know what that means? That means that Bible, the spirit in this thing did something to your spirit. It showed you something in this Bible. Read. A broken and contrite heart. Huh? Oh God, thou will not despise. You should have a broken heart because your people are dying out here, sis. And our people are dying out here because we won't repent. We need to repent, sis. We need to get back to keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Or our oppressors are going to keep slaying us and holding themselves not guilty. Right. That's what's going to keep happening. So what are some laws that we need to keep and repent from? Uh, give me fringes real quick. My man, say put real quick, bro. Watch this, sis. Because, um... We're going to get you right, sis. We're going to get you some laws. And Lord willing, the next time I see you, sis, I want to see you keeping right, some commandments right. so that one at a time we can stop this. Because one day, God's going to fight for us. Right. Just like he did back in ancient Egypt. Right? Read what you got. <clears throat> Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. So you see these things on, on our brother's garments? These are our camp garments, right? So we have fringes. We have these on our shirts as well. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And then you also see this blue ribbon, right? So we got fringes, border of blue. Fringes, border of blue, right? Read. Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, uh -huh. that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord uh -huh. and do them. So this is your heritage, sis. When you wear these things, they remind you that your God and only your God chose you. Because only one people on the planet got these. This is our dress code. And we wear that thing with pride. You know how many people ask me everywhere I go? Because we make these things look good since we match it with our clothes. Sometimes the joints match with our shoes and our shoestrings and our belts, hats and everything. Our, our things look good. God made us to be royalty. We were made to be princes, kings, queens, dignitaries, right? And this is how we start that thing, sis. And that killing of our people won't stop until we start doing things like this. Give me that Revelations 1 and 6 real quick. Uh, nah, right? And these things are for not just us, but our children. We royalty of the most high order, sis. We got sons. God's the king of everything. So we, his sons, what, are, what, what belongs to us? Everything, right. sis. You understand that? Not, not every. And oh, guess what? Everybody too. You supposed to have slaves, sis. You are the people that's supposed to have slaves. You're not supposed to be a slave. Right. You're supposed to have them. The Bible says you're not even supposed to walk on the ground, sis. Teach. This is the Bible says. Watch this. Read. Revelations chapter one verse six. Read. And have made us kings and prince. Excuse me. And priests unto God. And his father. Right, we're supposed to be priests and kings, sis. And if the sons are priests and kings, then the women are queens, princesses. That's what you're supposed to be, of God. We're not equal, sis. We above everything. Right. That's why we hate it so much. The nations are jealous of us, sis. That's why they treat us so bad. It's jealousy. And they should be jealous. What they can't do is keep putting their hands on us like they do. Right? Now, give me another law. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Um, right? Because you wearing a dress, right, sis? Right? Give me modesty. 2 and 9. First thing you need 2 and 9, right? So I'm glad you're wearing a dress. But your dress needs to be uh, a certain kind of dress. Because if I'm a married man, which I am, should I see my sister's figure? Who is that for? That's for your husband. Do you have a husband? Not yet. Oh, okay. Well, all praise he needs to marry you, and I hope he does marry you, right? It sounds like he's gearing up to you, right? So all praise. Now, my sister's wearing a dress, but you're wearing an immodest dress. That's hip performing, figure showing, right? That's what a princess is supposed to do. Read. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. Now, remember, all these things I'm teaching you are to stop the wrath of God. Because the reason why we suffer the way we do is because God is pissed at his sons and daughters. Because we broke his commandments. So then he, let, he lets this white man kill us. 
he lets these other people kill us because he's mad at us. But we can appease his wrath by doing things like this. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel is things that cover you up, right? That don't show your form. Like you said, that's for your husband to see, right? So a princess of God can appease the wrath of God so that your people stop dying by dressing and covering yourself up, right? Read. With shamefacedness. Coming off as shy, not all up in men's face like our sisters. Because our sisters, and that doesn't mean you, you don't engage in conversation with a man, but our sisters seek men's attention to them. And they do it by wearing the most revealing thing, and then they, they buck up in men's face. But the Bible says our sister is not only supposed to be modest, but shy almost. And at one time, my sister was very shy. Think about when, when our grandmother and them grew up. My mother would have, my grandmother would have never been in a man's face. But guess what? A man would have pursued my grandmother. He would have he would have shot his shot. Especially she was dressed all modest and clean the hair all did, taken care of. Yeah, my grandfather would have went and shot his shot. Because he's supposed to. He's supposed to choose his bride. Read. And sobriety. Uh, and sober, not drunk. You can drink, but not drunk. Not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Verse 10. But which becometh women. Professing godliness uh -huh. with good works. Well, with good works, right? Meaning they keep the commandments and they teach their daughters. You got children? Daughter? Okay, all praise. How old is your daughter if you don't mind me asking? She'll be nine. She'll be nine years old, right? Give me uh Nah, 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 nah. Uh, was it Jeremiah? Ezekiel, Ezekiel. 14, 14, 16, 44, right? Got a nine year old daughter, right? Right? Nine year old daughter. So it's very important for you to not only wear fringes and wear modest apparel, but teach your daughter to do the same. Because we don't want our daughters to grow up and make the same mistakes we do, right? Remember, broken and contrite heart. These things happen to us. Matter of fact, go to Deuteronomy 4 first. Hold that, Deuteronomy 4, right? And in verse five. Watch this, sis. I'm gonna show you that once we start doing these things, everybody's gonna take notice. And believe me, everybody already takes notice, because we go everywhere, right? We go everywhere, and people always take notice, especially when we be out with our families. We, when we be all with our families, we got on garments. My wife got on a nice garment. My sons and my daughters got on nice garments. Her face is covered. Her, her, huh? Her face is covered. Her face is covered, yeah, because of COVID, of course. But they have beautiful hair wraps, jewels on, earrings, long flowing garments that look like they're gliding across the, the floor. You know, children look nice with priestly garments on, Father's Day with their sons and their wives. And people always do this thing right here, sis. What is, what is this? I don't understand. These, they look like niggas, but they gotta be like super niggas or something. These niggas is not That's normal niggas. niggas. That's what they think. <laughs> they think these, these, these aren't normal niggas right here. These are like special Negroes because they just don't appear to be, their pants not sagging. Since we can gather with hundreds of us, maybe even thousands, nobody goes to prison. Nobody gets drunk. Nobody's shooting their shot at somebody else's woman or man. And we do this constantly and people you can, you can. I'm going to show you why. Read. This is what happens when we keep the laws of God. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Nah, religion. And judgments. God taught us statutes and judgments, laws. Read. Even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land. Whether you go to possess it. Wherever we go, sis, we're supposed to be keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Why? Read. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom. This is your what? Your wisdom. The Bible says that when our people keep the laws of God, this is our wisdom. Right. We don't look wise when our pants hang below our, below our tail. We don't look wise when we're sitting up here, world star, fighting in the middle of the street like a bunch of damn. Negroes. We don't look wise. We don't look wise when our husband. Oh, dang. All praise. You see that picture, sis? That's 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 at a wedding, sis. That's a set of wedding. My brother got married. And guess what? Our wives look just as glorious. Actually, our wives, I think, look better. Because our wives deck themselves up. We gotta uh, the brothers gotta catch up. We trying, but our sisters be bad, sis. Our sisters be clean when they get dressed up, right? When we do stuff like that, the Bible says this. We, for this is your wisdom uh -huh. and your understanding uh -huh. in the sight of the nations, Read. which shall hear all these statutes, which shall hear these statutes and these commandments and see us doing them. Say, surely this.
This great nation is a wise and understanding people. When they see us husbands, well, hold on. I, I, since I have a lot of children, I ain't gonna say the number, I have a lot of children. Okay. You know what happened? Nah, I ain't got that many. <laughs> uh, close though, You're real close, right? I got a lot of children, and I raise all of them, sis. Right? I raise, matter of fact, I'll say it, I got eight children, sis, right? Six boys, two girls, right? Take care of all of them. When me and my wife take our kids out, right? You know what's the first thing I get from people? Which is both insulting, but also shows me what, what, how important it is for me to do that. I get this. Hey man, you're doing a good job. Oh my gosh, those are all your kids? And that's your wife? Man, bro, you're an example, man. You know why that's so important? And that's offensive in a way, you know why? Because is that not what men should do? Is that not what men should do? Should not men marry a woman and take care of all of the children like a man? Right? Why is it that something like that can happen and people will see it and say, good job? Why does that happen? Because they don't see it anymore. Because they don't see it. But God said, it's not we coming. are supposed to follow his commandments so we right, exactly. can't say anything right. against him. Right, watch this. Now, remember we said when people see that, that's our wisdom and our understanding, right? Hosea 3 and 4. The reason why, when people see that, they be like, oh my gosh, this dude is wise. These brothers, he's a husband, take care of all the children, one wife, all those children by the same woman. He ain't got 18 baby mamas. He ain't got to have some wisdom. Because when you look at a lot of our men, they got three children, three different baby mothers, and they ain't taking care of none of the children, and they ain't with none of the mothers. Right. That's what you see. And that's a shame. That is not what men do. And I'm going to show you that a commandment in here. Now read this. This is why when people see that, it's shocking, but also glorious. Read. Hosea, chapter 3, verse 4. We're talking about these people on the sign, right? The Israelites. Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Read. For the children of Israel, the Israelites, shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image. Without what? An image. Without a positive image. The black man's image has been thoroughly destroyed. To where if you see a black man married with one woman, taking care of all of his children, it's a... This, this is a glitch in the matrix. You're supposed to be a baby father. This is supposed to be one of your baby mothers. And these children are supposed to have different mothers. You're supposed to be in prison or selling drugs. Your pants supposed to be below your ass. This is a glitch. This does not compute. Right. This, don't, this don't make sense. That's because the children of Israel have abided many days without a positive image. A positive image of a black man, a positive image of a black woman. And a positive image of them both together raising their children as one flesh. Like the Bible says. So we have a job to do. We have a big job to do. We need to come back to our wisdom and understanding. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.